Time to take you out to San Francisco where the Giants face the Baltimore Orioles, a team that for the past two seasons has been among the American League's elite. Last season, the Orioles made a surprising run to the postseason. This year, with baseball's home run leader Chris Davis and second year sensation Manny Machado leading the charge, the O's are poised for yet another run towards October. Beautiful Saturday afternoon in the Bay Area as we welcome you to Fox Saturday Baseball, second of a three game weekend series between the Giants and the Orioles. Good afternoon, everybody. Kenny Albert, along with Hall of Famer Tim McCarver. Orioles won the series opener last night in 10 innings by a 5-2 score. Tim, for the Giants, coming off their second World Series title the last three years, this season has been a struggle. One theory with which I agree is that postseason baseball, obviously the games are much tougher to win than during the regular season. And eventually you're going to have to pay the piper, and I think that at least in part it's what's wrong with the Giants' year so far this year. And, Tim, on the other side, the Orioles made it to the postseason for the first time in 15 years. They would love to get back. Oh, they would love the problem the Giants have. They don't want to hear it. Their last World Series championship coming in 1983, and they could make it again to the big show if they're starting pitching holes out. Orioles just four and a half out of the American League East. They have won their last three games. You'll be hearing a lot about this guy today. 21-year-old sensation Manny Machado, his third base counterpart, Kung Fu Panda, Pablo Sandoval. It's the Orioles and the Giants coming up next on Fox. in San Francisco as we get set for the Giants and the Orioles on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Orioles come in with a record of 64 and 51. Third place in the AL East, four and a half behind the first place race. Orioles batting order brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live boss. Nate McClough, the left fielder, will lead off. Followed by the third baseman, Manny Machado. 
Chris Davis bats third. And Adam Jones at the cleanup spot. Nick Marquez is in right field batting fifth. And the shortstop, J.J. Hardy. Second baseman, Ryan Flaherty. Catcher, Taylor Teagarden. And the pitcher, Wei-Yin Chen, will bat ninth as the Orioles face 30-year-old right-hander, Chad Godin. With his ninth major league team. And it's a feel-good story uh, in a season that has not felt good to the San Francisco Giants. Chad Godin, his first start back on June 2nd. And now Bruce Bochy can't get him out of the rotation, nor does he want him out of the rotation. Giants ninth major league team. So Chad Godin really commands that fastball on both sides. Good change up and a slider. And as a matter of fact, Buck Showalter telling us this was a tough day to rest. Matt Weeders, the fine catcher of the Orioles, because he wanted a left-handed bat in there. But instead, he's resting him, and Taylor Teagarden's behind the plate for the Orioles. The opening pitch brought to you by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. 5-2 win for the Orioles in 10 innings last night. Here we go as Godin delivers. Missing high and away to Nate McClough. The Orioles left fielder doubled in last night's game. He's 3-for-3 three three lifetime against Godin. On the ground to the second baseman, Scudero. So McLeod retired on two pitches. As we check out the Giants in the field, around the infield, Belt, Scudero, Arias, and Sandoval. In the outfield from left to right, Francoeur, Torres, and Pence. The battery of Godin. And the reigning National League Most Valuable Player, Buster Posey. One away as Manny Machado steps in. Two more doubles for Manny last night. 42 on the season, which leads all of Major League Baseball. Separated by about three feet, two of the great young baseball players in the Major Leagues today. Buster Posey, the catcher. Manny Machado, the third baseman. Machado made his Major League debut a year ago yesterday in Kansas City on August 9th, 2012. The next day, a year ago today, hit his first two big league home runs. An all-star in his first full season. Godin missing low and away. Now 2-1 and one on Machado. Joe Buck and I had a chance to talk to Manny before the All-Star game this year, and you talk about impress. It's rare that you come away with a better impression of a young man than we had of Manny Machado in New York this year. And his manager, Buck Showalter, seconded those thoughts when we spoke with him earlier today. I mean, Buck uh, raising his eyebrows uh, as if to say... This guy, who just turned 21, by the way, on July 6th, first-round draft pick by the Orioles three years ago. He is something. It's going to be something for a long, long time. He was the third overall pick in that 2010 draft. Chosen first overall fellow by the name of Bryce Harper. Yeah, from Las Vegas. Payoff pitch to Machado, and he fouls it back. So Machado stays alive with the Major League's home run leader, Chris Davis, waiting on deck. And speaking of home runs, Manny Machado only has 10 in a small ballpark in Baltimore. But you know what comes with age? Strength and lift. Those doubles are going to be home runs before too very long. 42 doubles this season for Machado. Curve is in for a called strike three. That was a backup slider. Manny, who has been ejected from one game. He missed five and a half innings earlier in the year. He thought that pitch was either inside or low or both, but they weren't. Machado has played all but five and a half innings for Buck Showalter since he was 
recalled 366 days ago. So with two away, here's Chris Davis, and he takes strike one. Davis, the big hit of the 10th inning for the Orioles last night, a two-run double after the Giants had tied the game in the bottom of the ninth off closer Jim Johnson. Remember the center fielder who's Andres Torres this afternoon. In last night's game, Gregor Blanco was playing in left center field for Chris Davis, and Davis hit the ball in right center field. So a lot of teams will do that. They'll play him straight away in the outfield and to shift with that exaggerated shift in the infield. And this gives us a chance to show it. Check it out last night. The infield is playing Chris to pull, but look at Grego Blanco in center field. He has a long way to run for this down and in fastball hit by Chris Davis, scoring two, and the Orioles win it in 10. And here's the infield today. Check the center fielder playing straight away. And Davis is down on strikes, so Godan retires the Orioles in order. He strikes out Machado and Davis back to back. High 13 games under the 500 mark at 51 and 64. Their batting order brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you got to live boss. Marco Scudero leads off, followed by the shortstop Joaquin Arias. Brandon Belt hits third, a home run in back to back games for Belt. Buster Posey in the cleanup spot, then Hunter Pence. Pablo Sandoval will bat six. Bottom of the order, Jeff Francois, Andres Torres, and Chad Godin as the Giants get set to face 28 year old left hander Wei In Chen. Way in from uh, the island of Taiwan. Pitched four years in Japan for the Chunichi Dragons. He missed two months of the season. That's why we talked about him in the opener. Starting pitching being so important to the Orioles. He's the only left-hander. Throws primarily a two-seam, four-seam fastball. And Buck Showalter said, you'll see a lot of those today. Marco Scudero leading off for the Giants. The first time All-Star last month at the age of 37. What a job Scudero did last year after coming to San Francisco in late July. Helping lead the Giants to their second title in three years. He was named MVP of the National League Championship Series. Scudero, Arias, and Belt here at the bottom of the first inning. How could any baseball fan forget it? The night where the raindrops fell in the clincher, Game 7 of the National League Championship Series, and Marco Scudero lapping it all up. Great story. Hey. 
Now two and two on Scudero who went 0 for 5 in last night's game. Undeterred with two strikes one of the few major league hitters that can hit as well with two strikes as up to that point. Scudero with two strikes flies out to the right fielder Markakis for out number one. Defensively for the Orioles, they've committed the fewest errors in all of baseball, only 34 all season. Davis at first, Flaherty giving Roberts the day off at second, Hardy and Machado on the left side of the infield, McClough, Jones, and Markakis from left to right in the outfield. And as Tim mentioned earlier, Matt Weeder's not starting today, so it's the battery of Chen and Taylor Teagarden making his 15th start. Arias fouls off the first pitch from Chen. Brandon Crawford giving the day off by Bruce Bochy, so Arias starting at shortstop. Batting 279 on the season. 0 for his last seven. Moving to his left, Hardy. Two out. If you've got a nickname for J.J. Hardy, it's get you by a step. I know that's a long nickname. But usually his moniker, I'll get you by a step. Whatever it takes. Talk about consistency and steadiness at short. That's Hardy. We'll also get you with the ping pong paddle. Oh, will he ever? <laughs> Brandon Belt, first pitch. Base hit left center. That's a nice approach right there. Brandon Belt, after hitting his 13th home run last night. Hensley Mullins has to love that approach. Hensley is the hitting instructor for the Giants. After you hit a home run, you don't want to become home run conscious, so you come out, hit the ball the other way, and that's good hitting by Belt. Six-game hitting streak for Brandon Belt. He's gone deep in each of the last two games. There's Bam Bam. Came up as a top prospect with the New York Yankees back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. So a two-out base runner for the Giants as Buster Posey steps in. Posey 0 for 3 last night. Chris Tillman was fabulous. Did not factor in the decision once the Giants tied the score in the bottom of the ninth. Tillman went eight innings, allowed one run on four hits, struck out a career-high nine. Belt the runner on first, two outs, bottom of the first inning. As Chen misses low, one and one. You notice the Giants are coming out swinging this afternoon. You know, they have the same reports, scouting reports that we have. The difference is they have to do something with it, and we don't. We get to read it, we don't have to hit it. <laughs> right. Posey flies out to Adam Jones in center. So Belt stranded on first. Adam Jones, three time All Star, leading off for the Orioles when we return to San Fran.
Today's telecast presented by Budweiser is sponsored by the 2013 Ford F-150 with EcoBoost. And by Taco Bell. Sometimes you got to live boss. Kenny Albert, Tim McCarver back in San Francisco. Top of the second inning. Never get tired of these views, do you? No. Not one bit. Chad Godad retired the Orioles in order in the first. He'll face the middle of the order. Jones, Markakis, and Hardy. You and I had a nice chat with Adam Jones on the field yesterday. and He looked over, saw Giants manager Bruce Bochy about 20 feet away. said, that's my guy. Adam grew up in San Diego. Mm -hmm. Bochy, of course, a longtime Padre player and then manager. Adam Jones born in 1985. Bruce Bochy's last year as a player was 87, but then he managed the Padres from 95 through 2006, led San Diego to the 98 World Series. Adam Jones was an impressionable 13-year-old at the time. Attended numerous Padre games, and he took the trolley to old Jack Murphy Stadium. And he rattled off pretty much the entire lineup of the mid-90s Padres for us yesterday. Very impressive. The Orioles played a day game in San Diego. They won that game on Wednesday, sweeping the Padres. Then they had Wednesday night off, Thursday off. How did Adam Jones spend his Thursday? In Napa, testing the grapes with harvest a couple of months away. You enjoyed hearing about that trip. I did. <laughs> After he went a very productive seven for nine in San Diego, his home city. Yep. He is some player. And you know, there are a lot of young players who don't want to play every day. They want to conveniently go through a season and miss 10, 15, perhaps 20 games. Not Adam Jones. Every day, Adam. You could add a couple of his teammates to that list as well. That's right. Reaches out, fouls it off to the right side. Jones, Weeders, Machado all lead the American League as far as innings played at their position. And J.J. Hardy, Chris Davis, Nick Markake is not far behind. Two hits and an RBI for Jones in last night's game. Good he becomes pitch. strikeout victim number three. Good slider from Gaudin. Off the plate away and playing on Jones's aggressiveness. Watch and see how far this ball is off the plate. Good pitch. So three consecutive strikeouts for Chad Godin, who started the season in the bullpen. His first 18 appearances this year came out of the pen, and today his 11th consecutive start. Had not started a game since the 2009 season with the New York Yankees. First pitch to Nick Markakis, a called strike. Godin pitched out of the pen for the Marlins last season. The Giants are his ninth major league team in 11 years. Off to a good start today. He's retired the first four Orioles. He has faced, and now Markakis behind on the count, nothing and two. It's kind of the lexicon of, of baseball, Kenny, that hitters are often deemed as a hot hitter. Say a guy uh, hits in 14 of 15 games, batting 400. Few people talk about pitchers being hot, but what you're seeing right there on your screen is a red-hot pitcher in Chad Gaudin. Five and one as a start of this season for the Giants. He replaced Ryan Vogelsong in the rotation. Vogelsong finally returned last night. He had been out since mid-May. Pitched well, too. And because Godin is pitching so well, Barry Zito is now in the Giants' pen. Mm -hmm. One, two. Markakis gets a piece of it. Bruce Bochy, the terrific manager of the Giants, the manager of the Giants when they won in 2010, won last year sweeping Detroit. He has tried to mix and match with the best of them, but the Giants continue their squalor in last place. Kings of the baseball world to last place here in August. 
Base hit into left field, so the Orioles have their first base runner as we check out our Ford keys to the game, Tim. And uh, that's why our Ford keys have the Orioles staying hot in cool California. Buck Showalter would love that. And for the Giants, I'm sure they're asking the suggestion boxes, Phil. Any suggestions? Do you have any? Anybody? I have none. <laughs> You talk about the Orioles will make it to the postseason if they're pitching holes out, but it's a lot more than uh, and just the Giants being 22nd in earned run average throughout the major leagues. Hitting, fielding, pitching, all areas. You alluded to the Orioles record in California. They are 9-2 and two in the state of California this season. Three straight wins, two in San Diego and one here in San Francisco last night. Six game hitting streak for J.J. Hardy he went deep last night. His 20th home run of the season joining a select list. Orioles shortstops who have hit 20 home runs. Cal Ripken Jr., Miguel Tejada, and now J.J. Hardy. Trying to remind himself to keep that left shoulder in there. Guys continually doing that as hitters. But not on pitches like that. <laughs> on that pitch, you want to get that left shoulder out of there as quickly as possible. Markakis, the runner on first. The 3 0 from Godin in for a called strike now, 3 and 1. Last night, number 20 on uh, the season for. J.J. Hardy. Off Ryan Vogel's song. Hardy draws a walk, so the Orioles now with two on. Only one out. Time for a game break. We head to the MLB Network studio. Matt Fiskerjian, Matt. Hey, Kenny, when Roberto Hernandez was Fausto Carmona, he had held Adrian Gonzalez to a one for six. But now that Roberto Hernandez is Roberto Hernandez, I think Adrian Gonzalez likes this guy. Two-run home run to start the scoring in L.A. L.A. looking to win their fifth in a row. Kenny, back to you and Tim. Thanks, Matt. What a game last night in Los oh, Angeles. Oh, my goodness. Fernando Rodney of the Tampa Bay Rays blowing his seventh save opportunity of the year. Dodgers scoring four in the bottom of the ninth. My gosh. Coming back from a 6-1 deficit. Talk about red hot. How about that team? 15-game road win streak came to an end this week. Now back to their winning ways at home. Ryan Flaherty takes ball two. Now a visit from Buster Posey to Chad Godan. Who had retired the first four in the game? A lot of one-out single to Marquez, then walked Hardy, and now has fallen behind two and zero. Oh. Orioles were last here in 2010. It's only the 11th game all time between these clubs, and of course a Super Bowl rematch between these oh, two yeah. cities: the Ravens and the 49ers. <laughs> it's Showalter and Bochi instead of Harbaugh and Harbaugh. <laughs> Ball three. So seven of the last eight pitches from Godan have missed the strike zone. Three out of Flaherty. Inside, he walks on four pitches. Orioles have low to the bases here in the top of the second inning. Among many quotes, uh, as Dave Rigetti is out to talk to Chad Godin, Dave, one of the one of the great pitching coaches in the game, has been with Bruce Bochy since Bruce came here. But Bruce saying this week, walks have been an issue all season. And here it up and bites a Giants pitcher again. Two consecutive walks, loading the bases for the Orioles. Well, Tim America's new sports network is coming in just seven days, and it all begins with an epic night of premieres, beginning with UFC Fight Night as 
Shogun Hua takes on Chael Sonnen, followed by the news and highlights show fans have been waiting for Fox Sports Live. It all begins next Saturday at 8 Eastern only on Fox Sports 1. My thoughts exactly. Shogun Hua. <laughs> You're a big fan. So I'm told. I will be. One week from tonight. The debut of Fox Sports 1. Godan missing high to Taylor Teagarden. So nine balls thrown by Godan over his last ten pitches. Back-to-back mm. -back walks. Ideal hitting situation right here. You know you're going to get the fastball. Try and pull it and drive in a couple of runs. See, that's the other side is that the pitcher is so wild that he can't throw strikes. I say when you know what's coming and you're going to get a cookie down the fat part of the plate swing away. One career grand slam for Teagarden is just six for 45 in limited action this season takes strike two. With the pitcher Chen on deck. Bases loaded, one out. Marquette is thrown around third. Hardy over at second. And Flaherty at first. Two balls, two strikes. Taylor Teagarden awaits the 2-2, and he's down on strikes. Big strikeout for Godin, his fourth. Since the leadoff hitter, Nate McLeod, grounded to second base, nobody's made contact. There have been four strikeouts and three walks since then. I beg your pardon, there was a single by Mark Kekas to left field. Very unusual. So now, Tim, the first at bat this season for Wei In Chen. We spoke to him yesterday. Told us he used to bat right handed. But he was told by a coach to protect his left arm. Right. Turn around, bat the other way. Yep. He did that at age 12. He's 0 for 3 lifetime in his major league career. And Godin again falls behind 2 0. Interleague play, National League ballpark. First at bat of the season for Wei In Chen. Now I think you're flashing the take sign if he knows it. <laughs> Fastball missing inside. Ball 3, 3 0. I think. And Buck Showalter is advanced like this. I think you're giving the take sign three pitches in a row. I agree. Godin has already walked two in the inning. Nowhere to put Chen. 3-0 pitch. There's a strike. 3-1. Taking two more times, Tim. I think so. Full count. Bases loaded. Two outs. Payoff pitch from Godin. Chen gets the bat on it. Bounces back to the pitcher, and the Orioles strand three. He may have gone after ball four.
Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Bottom of the second inning here in San Francisco. Orioles loaded the bases in the top half. But Godin struck out T Garden and then Chen bounced back to the box. And a ball on a ball that may have been inside. Maybe. And maybe Chen and the Orioles get the call. But we'll never know. On the 3 2 pitch, after walking two, striking out one, the 3 2 pitch could have been inside. They'll know. They'll know what kind of call you get from CB Buckner. So how about Chen? He threw only 11 pitches in the first inning, and then he faced six pitches at the plate. <laughs> a lot of two-out single to Brandon Belt in the first. So Hunter Pence, the number five hitter, leads off for the Giants. Two hits and a run batted in for Pence in last night's game. One by the Orioles in ten innings, 5-2. Pence, Sandoval, and Francoeur here in the second against the 28-year-old left-hander. It's indicative of an offense having a tough time scoring runs when outfielders are hitting positions right, center, left. And when all three outfielders are batting in the four spots before the pitcher in the National League. That's an indication of a team having a tough time offensively. Now two and two on Pence. Giants 13th in the league in runs scored. 14th in home runs. Last place in their division 13 games below 500. Two two right field Mark Kakis one out offensively the Giants have hit six home runs in their last 30 home games think about that they just do not have a lineup of course they they proved that wrong last year during the World Series the MVP of the World Series Pablo Sandoval with three home runs, two of those off Justin Verlander in game one. Six in the last 30 home games. Incredible. Oh. Wow. On the other side, you have the Orioles who lead Major League Baseball in home runs. They've hit 84 more home runs than the Giants. My gosh. It's almost one a game. More. Right center. Adam Jones two away. So Chad has retired the first two Giants here in the second. And now we'll face Jeff Francoeur, who is the only Giant on their roster who has previously faced Wei and Chen as a member of the Kansas City Royals. Francoeur three for eight against Chen. Came to the Giants in early July, but the experience does not matter. Swings at the first pitch, grounds out to Chris Davis. An eight-pitch second, only 19 pitches over the first two thrown by Chen.
Top three in San Francisco, Nate McClough leads off for the Orioles against Chad Godin, who threw 30 pitches in the second inning. 43 over the first two. Quite a contrast with Wei and Chen, who's thrown only 19 pitches. Orioles loaded the bases in the second, could not score. And now Godin again falls behind 2-0. McLeod grounded out to the second baseman, Scudero. Sometimes you're doing things wrong on the mound and you don't even realize it. You need another right-handed pitcher to tell you about it. And that's why when Chad, Chad got in, went in the dugout the last time, Tim Lincecum is talking about drifting. You're not using your leverage. By drifting, it means drifting toward home before you release the ball. Godin translated as pulling his front shoulder out. That goes on all the time, and now what do you know? He comes out and throws four straight balls to open the third. Third walk issued by McClough. So now Godin will face the Orioles' Mr. Everything, Manny Machado. He is all of that. Does it at the plate, in the field. And as you mentioned, just turned 21 in early July. Mm. Machado called out on strikes his first time up. Takes a called strike, nothing and one. Lead off walk to McClough, 0-1 to Machado, nothing in two. Manny has played 166 games and has 50 doubles in his career. Forty-two of those doubles coming this season. Major League record is 67, set by Earl Webb of the Red Sox back in 1931. You may remember the name Jay Johnstone. Well, Jay Johnstone, who was with the Dodgers and the Phillies and a number of teams, had a chance for the doubles championship back in 1976. He used to stretch triples into doubles. <laughs> we used to kid him all the time, said, Jay, if they give you third base, take it. He didn't want it. He didn't want it because he had a chance to beat Pete Rose out for the doubles championship. He ended up with 38, and Pete won the doubles championship with 42. We used to kid Jay all the time. Jay, you it's the other way around. You don't stretch a triple into a double. <laughs> now one away as Machado strikes out for the second time today. So here's Davis, who struck out his first time up. Thirty seven home runs prior to the all star break for Davis which tied Reggie Jackson's record Reggie did it back in 1969 He's become the fifth Oriole in history to hit at least 40 home runs in one season The team record holder Brady Anderson with 50 back in 96 so Davis just nine away Diving stop by belt they cannot get the out at second as the ball squirts into center field. Holding it third is McLeod. Davis in at second. That was an inadvertent good base running play by McLeod because he didn't slide prematurely to open up the lane for the shortstop Arias. From his knees, great stop. The throw going in, standing up. Eddie Stanky, who was a great farm director of the minor leagues used to teach that he'd say don't slide at second base if you're the runner on it first if you do you clear that area for the shortstop to see the ball the ball hits McLeod in the back and a two base error on Brandon Bell so a fielder's choice and the error charge to belt is seventh of the season so the Orioles, who had the bases loaded in the second inning with one out, now have runners on second and third with one out here in the third. And the cleanup hitter, Adam Jones, at the plate.
One more look at McLeod going in and standing up at second base. Now, had he slid, that clears the area for Arias. McLeod ends up on third and Davis on second. One and one on Jones, who struck out his first time up. Godin has retired seven Orioles, five via strikeout, but he's also walked three. Mm -hmm. He's already thrown 55 pitches, one out here in the third. Now two and one on Jones. Now two and two, Adam Jones, an all-star for the third time, leading vote getter among American League outfielders this year. This is where if you're thinking and you're Adam Jones, well, obviously Adam, a very intelligent hitter. You got to be thinking slider away off the plate. He struck out on that pitch with nobody on to open the second inning. He'll get it again right here. Look at Posey. Nope, got the fastball. He'll get it again. It's my story, and I'm sticking to it, Kenny. Let's see what Dan and Posey have in mind. Payoff pitch to Jones. He fouls it off. He got it. Control is whether pitchers control pitches off the plate where they want to. It's not only a strike thrower, but a guy who can throw a ball in the appropriate situation. First base open here. Payoff pitch. Center field. Torres settling under it. Here comes McClough. Davis on his way to third. And the ball deflects away. So McLeod scores. Davis advances. Orioles lead 1-0 on the sacrifice fly. RBI number 81 for Adam Jones. Pablo Sandoval came very close to interference by obstructing Chris Davis, who had just slid. The ball gets by him. Torres properly goes to third base. No chance for McLeod at home. That ball. Now watch Sandoval. He goes right through Chris Davis at third base. He did it inadvertently. I think that's what third base umpire Mike Everett is saying. So no obstruction there. So with two outs, here's Nick Markakis who singled his first time up. Two outs, Davis the runner on third. And the fastball is in for a strike to Markakis, nothing in one. Good play by Buster Posey. I'll tell you, it is awfully tough with the pitcher who's having a difficult time throwing strikes with a runner on at third and you're the catcher because you know you have to make plays like this. One one. Belt will take it to the bag. Oriole score run. On a walk, an error, and a sacrifice fly. Lead 1-0.
We are back in San Francisco, bottom of the third inning with the Orioles leading the Giants. 1-0. Andres Torres, the number eight hitter, will lead off for San Francisco against Wei-In Chen, who's thrown only 19 pitches, Tim, over the first two innings. Chad Gaudin, 63 pitches over the first three. Torres mired in a 1-for-22 slump. He'll be followed by Godin and then Scudero. Two zero from Chen. And Torres takes ball three. One base runner for the Giants so far. Belt single to the first inning. Giants were retired in order on eight pitches in the second. Now three and one on Andres Torres. Switch hitter batting from the right side against the left-hander way in Chen. Right field, long run for Marcakis, and he makes the catch to retire Torres for out number one. That area in right center field is where triples go to die. <laughs> this is a tough, tough ballpark for power hitters. And normally home runs or balls against the fence are out here at AT&T. And as you mentioned earlier, only six home runs for the Giants here at home the last 30 games. Chad Godin, one for 21 at the plate this season. He only has two career hits in 61 at-bats. Early win was a pitcher of yore for the Chicago White Sox, a Hall of Famer who won 300 games. And that's how he used to get guys out at Old Comiskey Park, up in the strike zone. You hear that uh, term all the time that pitchers have to stay down. Early said if they're going to hit long fly balls to center field, why stay down? I'd rather have the out in center instead of a ground out that has a chance to get through. Like that. High heat from Chen, so go Dan down on strikes, two away. Well, the Fox Sports 1 fan cam caught fans here at the ballpark who are very excited about Fox Sports 1, America's newest sports network coming one week from today, August 17th. You and I will be at Fenway Park right next Saturday. You're unbelievable. You know that, and I want to compliment you for doing a football game on Friday night. You're doing the Patriots and whom? The Buccaneers. The Bucks and the Patriots. And then the Red Sox Yankees less than 24 hours later. Now, folks, that takes talent. That's only about a 25 mile drive between Foxborough and Fenway. Yeah, I'm talking about the preparation, not the mileage. <laughs> well, when I have guys like you and Moose Johnston and Tony Siragusa, I don't have to do much heavy lifting. You got to tell that story about Moose Johnston and Buck Showalter of all people. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to that. All right. Machado, long throw, and Scudero is retired. We told you he was good, a one hopper to get him. Giants retired in order in the third.
Today's telecast is sponsored by AT&T, helping you do what you do even better. AT&T, rethink possible. And by Fox Sports 1, America's new sports network, coming in just seven days. J.J. Hardy leads off for the Orioles here in the fourth against Chad Godin. Hardy walked his first time up. He'll be followed by Flaherty and then Teagarden. Ground ball to the shortstop, Arias. One out. Well, Tim, back in February 2008, the Orioles made a deal with the Mariners. They uh, traded away Eric Bedard, acquired five players. Two of them represented the Orioles in the All-Star game last month. One is Adam Jones. The other one, starting last night's game, was terrific once again. Chris Tillman went eight innings, allowed only one run on four hits. Career-high nine strikeouts, and the 25-year-old right-hander joins us live from the Orioles dugout. Chris, it's your first full season in the major leagues. What's been the secret to your success this year? Uh, I think a little bit of everything. It's kind of a puzzle, you know, a bunch of pieces to it. I think uh, strength in the offseason, um, you know, uh, being able to stay consistent with your routine, and, um, you know, I think that translates to the mound and and uh, being able to, you know, be, be efficient and um, execute your pitches. Chris, uh, at one time, strengthening programs were deemed uh, as the wrong thing for pitchers, but not so anymore, right? Yeah, I think, I think you know, the game's changed a little bit. I think mm -hmm. everyone's getting bigger, faster, stronger, and, you know, in order to keep up and adjust with the game, I think you got to put in your time in the offseason. And, uh, you know, a couple of us, a couple of us get together in the offseason and, um, you know, train with uh, Brady Anderson, who's, who's now with the team, and, out in California, so we got a good program going up there, and you know, it's you know, stick with it. I'm thinking two on Flaherty. Chris, by the way, you're doing a nice job not reacting to those sunflower seeds that are being hurled at you from every direction in the dugout. Yeah, they don't feel too good. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, 10 and 1 over your last 12 starts, and since you were recalled by the Orioles last July 4th, only Max Scherzer has more victories 26 wins for Scherzer, 23. For you, you're the first Orioles pitcher to go 10 games above 500 since Mike Messina back in 99. And, and the team in the playoff hunt once again. You guys made it last year and gained a game last night of both the Red Sox and the Rays. What's the overall vibe in the clubhouse these days? Good vibe. I think, uh, you know, all these guys, you got a great clubhouse. You know, walk in there after a game and not know whether we, we won or lost. I think uh, being able to stay even keel, I think, is important, you know, especially if you know, we got a young team and these older guys, you know, kind of take charge in that. And, lead the pack and you know I think um, you know it really goes to show where this this organization came from and where we're at now you know I think you know this this offense is fun to watch when our pitchers go out there and do a job and you know it's it's pretty fun to watch these hitters one um, of the one of the great compliments Chris to a manager is that he's a player manager and I think Buck Showalter has turned into that or at least he appears to have turned into that yeah he's great he's great I think you know all of us Kind of when you when you get players to buy into what you're teaching, I think that's that's when things start going in the right direction. And um, you know he's been he's been good at that. He gets us all on board, and you know we all trust him, and you know we play hard behind him. Two two to Flaherty, and he fouls it back. Our player profile brought to you by AT and T, helping you do what you do even better. AT and T, we think possible. Chris, we're taking a look at some of your numbers over your last 14 starts, 11 and one. Earn run average of 3.86. Orioles have gone 13 and 1 over your last 14 starts. And team added a, a couple of starting pitchers just prior to the deadline. Scott Feldman, Bud Norris, as Flaherty strikes out now. Two away. Wei and Chen pitching well today. But what kind of a statement did it mean to you guys with the additions of, of Feldman and Norris prior to the deadline? It's awesome. You know, I think. Uh... We knew, we knew coming in, a lot of these guys knew Feldman. And, um, you know, before he even got here, I heard a bunch about him and how, how good of a guy he was. And, you know, we're, I know we're excited to have him. And he's another veteran presence in this clubhouse for, for the younger starting pitchers. And I think, uh, you know, Bud's just, a, just an addition on top of that. You know, this guy's going out. And he's thrown well for us. And uh, he has for the last couple of years for Texas. So he's, he's a good addition as well. Well, T Garden grounds out to the second base with Scooter on Chris. Thanks a lot for joining us. Congratulations on your success. Best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Middle of the fourth here in San Francisco. Our thanks to All Star Chris Tillman. What up, the Orioles?
What a day. What an atmosphere here in San Francisco with the Orioles leading the Giants. 1-0. San Francisco, only one base runner over the first three innings against Wei-In Chen. He's retired seven in a row and will face Joaquin Arias. Grounded out to shortstop his first time up. Arias, Tim, the answer to a, an obscure trivia question. Give it to me. When the trade was made between the Yankees and the Rangers prior to the 2004 season, Alex Rodriguez, hey, Rod, right? Alfonso Soriano, and Buck Showalter was managing the Rangers at the time. The player to be named later who went from New York to Texas in that deal is at the plate. Joaquin Arias. A-Rod, Soriano, Arias. And Arias grounds out to J.J. Hardy for out number one. Time now for a game break. We head east. Matt Veskersian. Yeah, Kenny, this is something that Giant fans just hate seeing, and that's Dodger success. L.A.'s won 35 of their last 43. They've got a five-and-a-half game lead over second place Arizona. The lineup contributions up and down today. Nick Punto singling in two. Dodgers up four early. Back to you guys in San Francisco. All right, thanks very much, Matt. Uh, Matt excuse me. One out as Brandon Belt steps in. And, and speaking of the Dodgers, Former Giants closer Brian Wilson threw a 1-2-3 inning last night in his Triple-A debut for the Dodgers. John Shea, a writer for the Chronicle, had a great article about Brian Wilson. Headlines, The Beard is Back. And he is back in baseball. John saying uh, he looks good in Dodger blue. He'll see Dodger blue before you know it. Every team in the major leagues can expand their roster from 25 to 40 players on September 1st. Boy, the Dodgers are the hottest team in the game. Ground ball to the right side with the Orioles in the shift. Davis to the bag. Two away. How about the three division leaders, Tim, in the National League in their recent play? Dodgers have won 35 of their last 43. Pirates continue to play well. Four-game lead in the Central, and the Atlanta Braves have won 14 in a row. Atlanta with a 15 and a half game lead. Incredible. In the National League East. Mm. Two away. Here's Buster Posey. Posey fly to center. His first time up. That was pitch number 39. Thrown by Chen. So he faced the first 12 batters, retired 11 of 12 on 38 pitches. Making it look easy. 12 game winner as a rookie last year. Spent nearly two months on the disabled list this season due to a straight right oblique. Chen with a record of 6 and 4. This is 14th start. Flaherty, the second baseman. Giants for the third straight inning. Retired in order by Wei In Chen.
consistently very well. So, yeah, he's done a hell of a job. Uh, Rags uh, also, when he came out of that second inning, having a tough time finding the plate, he was with Tim Lensicum, and I think Timmy was talking to him about drifting. Baseball is presented by Budweiser. Kenny Albert, Tim McCarver back in San Francisco as we head to the fifth with the Orioles leading the Giants. 1 0. Only one hit for each team over the first four innings. Way in Chin gets the bat on it. On the first pitch from Godin, flies out to the center fielder Torres for out number one. We spoke. Moments ago with Giants pitching coach Dave Rigetti, and we asked him what Godin has given the Giants over his first 10 starts this season. Yeah, he's done a hell of a job for us. You know, we brought him over for insurance. We knew our guys had thrown a lot of innings in the last few years, and we wanted to beef up that, that part of the, uh, I guess, rotation, almost having a six guy, you know, and a long guy. And, He's uh, he started off that way and then of course we had to use him as a starter and he's done a really a great job and kind of held us together when uh, we really weren't getting a lot of uh, starts consistently very well. So yeah, he's done a hell of a job uh, rags uh, also when he came out of that second inning having a tough time finding the plate. He was with Tim Lensicum and I think Timmy was talking to him about drifting for our audience. Would you explain what drifting is by a pitcher? Well. We all got legs and arms, you know, and we got to try to keep them together. So occasionally you get going to home plate and uh, you you pull off the ball a little bit and the balls are dying. You guys probably get a better look on TV right. from the side. You can see the ball kind of dying and occasionally pulling out of the strike zone and not really going through the strike zone. And, you know, and Timmy's on top of it with Godan and him are pretty close about these things. And it's a great help to have those guys back up what we're seeing and what Posey's seeing. Thanks, Dave. Great stuff. Best of luck. All the time, you guys. Thanks, Rags. All right, man. Our thanks once again to Dave Rigetti. There's home plate umpire C.B. Buckner. Take a look at what happened on the last pitch. It's like his right knee. Now, umpires do wear shin guards underneath those pants, by the way. That appeared... To get him in the crease of that uh, shin guard, you can see the crease that a catcher, they're similar to what a catcher wears, only he wears them inside the pants, not outside. Now the 0 2 to McClough off the bag at first, fielded by Belt, fires McClough safe at first with Godin covering, so it's an infield single off the bag. Second hit of the game for the Orioles. Brandon Belt does all he can as the ball hits the uh, bag, goes way up, and he fires a bullet to Godin. But McLaugh would have beat the play, would have beaten the play anyway. I guess the Giants are fortunate and unfortunate. Unfortunate that it hit the bag, and perhaps fortunate. That it wasn't a double instead of a single. So McLeod on for the second time today. He has scored the game's only run. Came home on an Adam Jones sacrifice fly back in the third inning. Manny Machado has struck out twice today. Clout the runner on first 27 steals this year. That's fifth in the American League. Oh one two Machado who was able to get out of the way now one and one. Orioles scored their run of the third a run on two hits Giants no runs only one hit. 
over the first four innings against Chen. Running situation right here. They don't run in the American League nearly as much as they do in the National League. A lot of times, what determines whether a runner at first runs or not is the count on the hitter. For instance, if it's a ball and two strikes or no, nothing in two, a curveball in the dirt, good running situation. Or if the if the hitter's ahead in the count, two balls and a strike's a good running situation. Bruce Bochy, a former catcher, trying to figure all that out. Nice block by Posey. Now two and two. Chris Davis looming on deck. One out, top of the fifth inning. Orioles lead one nothing. Fastball away. And Machado fouls it off. Back behind first. Two two and the Chato fouls it back. No room for Posey. Orioles have won three straight five of their last seven. Thirteen games over five hundred. Only a game and a half out of the wild card race and they picked up a couple of games. Against the Boston Red Sox, who have lost a couple in a row. It can close in a hurry. Torres moving to his left makes the catch for out number two. Well, America's new sports network is coming in just seven days. It all begins with an epic night of premieres, beginning with a UFC fight night as Shogun Hua takes on Chael Sonnen, followed by the news and highlight show fans have been waiting for. It's Fox Sports Live. It all begins next Saturday, 8 Eastern only on Fox Sports 1. With two away, here's Chris Davis. Struck out of the first, hit into a fielder's choice in the third. McLeod, the runner on first with two outs. Ball one to Davis. I don't think McLeod will run here because you've got Chris Davis with 41 home runs and 108 ribbies at the plate. However, if he does run, it's an awkward situation. For Joaquin Arias, who is now on the right side of second base because of the shift. He's a shortstop used to coming from the shortstop position to his left. Now he's got to go to his right. There's Arias right there. There we go. He is not a second baseman, so it's an awkward move if the runner runs for him to go to his right to make the play. Do you think he ever practices that move? No, I don't. No. Nope. We have seen more defensive shifts over the last couple of seasons. Primarily against left-handed hitters, too. Rarely will you see one against a right-hander. Davis pops it up to the left side. In foul territory, Posey unable to make the play. That's Sandoval's ball. It's a much easier play for Sandoval to make that play and than it much, is Posey. Excuse me, it's a much longer run due to the shift. Exactly. Well, that's a good point. That's a good point. So Sandoval could be 
exonerated in that situation. And that's something that I don't think Buster Posey even thought about. But Sandoval, that's a very good point, Kenny. Sandoval was at the shortstop position, so there's no way for him to get there. I was wrong. So that's Buster Posey's ball all the way. And we had just been talking about the situation with Arias. And now with the Giants in the shift, it's a long run from the shortstop position for Sandoval. That is a, a nice pickup, partner. No error on the play. It's ruled a no play. And now the payoff pitch to Davis. Another foul off to the left side. Now the shift is okay. I know a lot of teams are doing it. I know it kind of gets in a hitter's mind when they do that. He does something that he may not do otherwise, like try to hit the ball the other way, things like that. But for the most part, I think straightaway is the best way. Kurt Simmons, uh, a left-handed pitcher years ago, could really throw, too, came to the Cardinals in the early 60s, and he used to say, when going over the hitters, straight away, straight away, straight away, the only guy he would play a step to pull in the National League was Henry Aaron. And I asked him one day, why don't you shift on guys? He said, double day put them there for a reason. <laughs> Eighth pitch of the at bat to Davis. Left center. Torres on the edge of the warning track. Davis is retired. What a Saturday afternoon in San Francisco. Today's telecast presented by Budweiser is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. The Orioles lead the Giants 1-0. Bottom of the fifth inning here at AT&T Park. Only three hits in the game. Wei-Yin Chan has retired the last ten San Francisco Giant batters he has faced. 
A two out single off the bat of Brandon Belt in the first inning. The left center field and that has been it. Buck Showalter told us before the game to reiterate that Chin was going to throw a lot of fastballs today and he has done that. Only one base runner for the Giants. Pence fly to right his first time up. We spoke with Chen yesterday through his interpreter also named Tim Chen telling us that he was a big Randy Johnson fan. Yeah. Saw many Arizona Diamondback games on television as a youngster. Also followed the San Francisco Giants a bit. Another thing we asked him uh, was is he fluent in Japanese having played for the Chunichi Dragons in the Central League in Japan. There are two leagues over there Central and the Pacific. Chunichi Dragons in the Central and he said no I don't speak Japanese fluently. It's much much different from Taiwanese. And among pitchers born in Taiwan in the history of Major League Baseball, Chan is now second in wins, trailing only Chen Min Wang. Chan, a two time Olympian, 2004 in Athens, 2008 in Beijing, representing his country. 2 2 to Pence, and he is down on strike. Second strikeout for Chen, who is now retired 11 in a row. Chevrolet, the official vehicle of Major League Baseball, is celebrating a new season for new memories for your chance to win a community field makeover and an all new 2014 Impala visit ChevyBaseball.com. Sandoval fly to center his first time up. Takes ball one. I think it's interesting when you realize that baseball fever has reached Taiwan, but not the China mainland. It's obviously a red hot sport in Japan, in South Korea, and of course in Taiwan from where. Chin reigns, but not in China. But it will will be someday. Baseball trying to extend its reach to different parts of Asia. Sandoval fouls out to the first baseman Davis for out number two. Our Fox Sports One pitcher comparison presented by Fox Sports One, America's new sports network, coming August 17th. Only one blemish on Chen's record: the first inning single. Hit by Belt. Godan has allowed a runner only two hits over the first five innings. Here's Frank Kaur grounded out to Davis. His first time up on the first pitch from Chen flies out to Marquez in right. Fourth consecutive one, two, three inning. Chen needed only ten pitches in the fifth.
Today's telecast presented by Budweiser is sponsored by the makers of What a Day Men's, the official multi volumet of Major League Baseball. And by T-Mobile. Now your choice is simple. T-Mobile. Unleash. Sixth inning here in San Francisco. Kenny Albert, Tim McCarver, Orioles leading the Giants 1-0. Guillermo Moscoso. Acquired from the Cubs in late July. Comes out of the Giants pen in relief of Chad Godin. Moscoso started last Sunday in St. Petersburg against the Rays through four and two thirds innings. He's also pitched for Texas, Oakland, and the Colorado Rockies last year. 29 year old right hander from Venezuela with all of this talk about pitch counts going into the game. There are very few people uh, concerning the saber metrics of the game and all that stuff the new forms of explaining the game that talk about what the score is and the score is only one nothing Baltimore. So Chad got in did a very good job regardless of his pitch count. He threw 93 pitches. Jones to shallow center and it drops in for a leadoff single. So Adam Jones, who drove in the only run of the game with a sacrifice fly in the third inning, is on at first. The changed him straight up, so with Blanco in left. He will bat in the number seven spot. And the pitcher, Moscoso, will bat ninth. Here's Dick Markakis, one for two. Had the Orioles' first hit back to the second inning. And the only time the leadoff man reached for either side today was back in the Orioles third when McLeod threw a leadoff walk and he came around to score. Only His run of the game. Only right. run to this point. Right. A one to Marcakis. Moscoso missing low and away. One and one. You could tell Moscoso is a pitcher who is easy to run on. He's very deliberate to home plate. Also, he throws a lot of splits in the dirt. And that's why he's keeping Jones close at first base. One and one on Marcakis. Orioles lead one nothing. Top of the sixth inning in San Francisco. One and two. Fun to listen to the subtle sounds of the 225th sellout here at AT&T Park. It's it's a crowd and a ballpark that uh, Bruce Jenkins, a columnist for the San Francisco Chronicle, said to reprise a 
a term used last year during the series. Saying it's a place for ridiculous fun. And is it ever. Even though the Giants have had a uh, tough time winning games they have not had a tough time drawing fans. One of the great fan bases in baseball. That sellout streak is the longest active streak. In Major League Baseball Red Sox. Streak came to an end. Back in April. Giants averaging over 41,000 per game. Only the Dodgers and Cardinals have drawn more fans at home than the Giants this season. But that's only due to the size of their ballparks. Right. Because the Giants have sold out every game. One and two on Marquecas. Jones takes his lead off first. No outs, top of the sixth inning. Another foul. Orioles looking to win their fourth in a row. Took a 2 0 lead last night. Giants came back, tied the game of the ninth. Orioles scored three in the tenth. Right field. Pence. Long run. Cannot get to it. Back to back singles for the Orioles. Jones and Marcakis here in the sixth inning. With this uh, glare of the sun here at, at the ballpark, it's very difficult for outfielders. And you could see it with Hunter Pence breaking back with that first step. And by the time he recovers, it's a single instead of an out. Mentioned uh, JJ Hardy and ping pong. He is the best ping pong player for the Baltimore Orioles. They do have a ping pong table in their clubhouse back in Baltimore. And he learned the game from his father, Mark Hardy, who was once ranked 270th in the world as a tennis professional. That's pretty good. And JJ telling us yesterday that his father, in order to, I guess, handicap the matches with his younger sons, he'd allow them to use a paddle, but he would use a sandal or a brick at one, at one point. And Mark uh, and his wife watching the game from Tucson this afternoon. Probably from the La Paloma Country Club in <laughs> Tucson. Mark would also play lefty. He's yeah. right handed, but yeah. it, it did right. not matter. Right. In the matches against his young sons. Yeah, and in the process, JJ become a, became a a killer at ping pong. I mean, nobody could beat him for the Orioles. Deep left field. Blanco on the warning track makes the catch. To retire JJ Hardy. Our game summary brought to you by Domino's. Oh, yes, we did. Orioles with a 1 0 lead. Terrific outing so far for Way and Chen. He's allowed only one base runner over the first five innings. Adam Jones drove in the game's only run back in the third. Brandon Belt has the only base hit for the Giants so far. One away for Ryan Flaherty. Came up in a similar situation in the second inning with two on one out. And he drew a walk to load the bases. Throw to second. And getting back in is Jones just barely. What a play by Arias. Hey, it looked like they had him. Watch the short hop grab by Arias back across his body. I'll tell you that was that was he looked out to me. I think he slid back into the throw. 
I'm not sure he touched second until the tag had been made. He's out. I was thinking at first, Kenny, that he not only prevented an error, but he got the out too. Had that ball gone into center field, Jones goes to third with less than two outs. Fine play by Arias to catch the ball, and the Giants should have gotten the call. And in my view, at least, I don't know if you agree. I agree with you. Todd Tishner, second base umpire, saw it differently. Again, Torres initially broke the other way and then comes in to make the catch for out number two. You may have heard of it. It's a daylight play. When the pitcher sees daylight between the shortstop and the base runner, he throws the ball knowing the shortstop will be in second base. I'm not sure Adam Jones got to the bag until after the tag was made. Yeah, I don't think he right, did. No, right, right there. there. Yeah. And now he reaches for the bag. Arias caught the ball, but the Giants didn't get the call. Back to back singles to start the inning, and then two flyouts. So now it's T Garden who struck out with the bases loaded in the second. Making the start for Weeders today. Garden had a huge moment on Fox last July in a home game against Detroit. Came off the disabled list, made his season debut with the Orioles, hit a walk-off home run in the bottom of the 13th inning on Fox. I had forgotten that. I'm sure he remembers. Oh, yeah. It's tough to when you have to catch behind a guy like Matt Weeders, who is so consistent behind the plate, works well with his pitchers, fine thrower. You know you're not going to have that many starts. He started 15 games this year. He did not go around, says C.B. Buckner, now one and two. Jones the runner on second. Markakis takes his lead off first. Two outs, top of the sixth inning. One two to T Garden. And a nice block by Posey now two and two. Boy, that was a terrific block. The reason it was, you don't expect the fastball to be in the dirt. Your reactions have to be quicker. Breaking ball, you're going down with it. Much easier to block than a pitch like that. Good play. Two balls, two strikes on T Garden. Out of the University of Texas. That was hittable. Funny, you hear after a game, uh, some of the post mortems is that. Well, he just made a couple of mistakes. There are a lot of mistakes that are fouled back, <laughs> and that was one of them. Moscoso delivers the 2 2, and T Garden is down on strikes. So Moscoso gets out of the inning. Orioles strand two. You're watching Fox Saturday Baseball presented by Budweiser.
break. Dodgers and Rays, uh, about the only thing to have gone wrong for the Dodgers today, and it wasn't this, a sack fly off the bat of A.J. Ellis scores a run. It was what happened after the play. James Loney to Yanel Escobar to Evan Longoria to tag Juan Uribe out, who after advancing drifted off the bag. Not quite the hidden ball trick, but Tim Wallach says, did that just happen? Uh, Angel Hernandez sure. confirming by saying, yeah, you're out, dude. Kenny, Tim, you see something new at the ballpark every day. Back to you guys in San Francisco. You certainly do, Matt. Gorgeous afternoon here in San Francisco as Andres Torres leads off for the Giants. Here in the bottom of the sixth inning against Wei-In Chen, who has retired 13 in a row. Torres fly to right his first time up. Nothing in one. Matt Vesurgeon uh, talking about the hidden ball trick. I can't remember the last time I saw a hidden ball trick in a major league game. Did you ever fall victim to one? No. Didn't see it that many times. There's a base hit up the middle for Torres. So he breaks an 0 for 12 slump. And the Giants have their second base runner of the game. Their first hit since the first inning. Kenny Albert, Tim McCarver here in the broadcast booth. Giants World Series champions two of the last three years. They visited the White House a couple of weeks back and President Obama had a very special visit in the Oval Office. Boy, I should say he asked for and received he's the President of the United States Willie Mays one on one. What a thrill that must have been for both of them. Willie Mays on hand with the defending World Series champion Giants. Willie Howard Mays. Birmingham, Alabama. Best player I ever saw. I don't know how you can be any better. Two dozen. 24. Special player, special man. Oh. Almost overreacted to T Garden. You know, something we saw down in the bullpen of the Giants before the game, Taylor Teagarden, now as a starting catcher today, working on his throwing with the equipment on. I have never seen that by a major league catcher that started a game. And had he made that play, I was going to say, well, it came in handy because his reactions were, he almost overreacted to that ball. Now Machado went on the grass to third as Blanco lays down the butt, does his job moving Torres over to second. Also interesting because during our chat with Buck Showalter earlier today, he asked you about the art of catching a foul tip and yeah. why certain catchers are better at it than others. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I told him, you know, I've never been asked that question, and I don't know the answer to it. A bigger glove. Any kind of shrug, maybe. Maybe, uh, I, I guess, in answer to, to Buck's question after thinking about it, that the catchers have a better opportunity to catch a foul tip if their arms are relaxed and back closer to the protector as opposed to extended when your arms become firm. He's always fun to talk to, and he always gives you something to think about. Before you leave his office. Sure does. Scooter O at the plate with one out. Giants have a runner on second for the first time today. That's Torres who led off the inning with a single. Sacrificed over by Blanco. By the way, we mentioned earlier, it was a straight-up switch. C.B. Bunker, the home plate umpire, made the straight-up signal during the last half inning, but that was then changed as Blanco hit up the number nine spot. Moscoso, the pitcher, in the number seven spot, initially announced as a straight-up switch, but that was not the case. Strike call now, two and one on Scudero. Orioles with a run of the third. 
Shen had retired 13 Giants in a row through the fifth. Torres takes his leadoff second with one out. Base hit left center. Here comes Torres around third. He will score. Giants have tied the game at one. Base hit, a walk. And Andres Torres scores on a piece of hitting by Marco Scudero. Out of the leadoff spot. Why is that important? Prior to Thursday, when Marco Scudero batted leadoff for the Giants, he had three hits. Since the All-Star game, up until Thursday, the leadoff hitters for the Giants were six for their last 70. Wow. So an RBI hit by Scudero batting out of that leadoff spot, even though not leading off this inning. That's uh, that's a rarity for the Giants since the All-Star game. His 23rd run batted in. He had been 0 for 7 in this series prior to that base hit. So Chen, who had been brilliant, allows a run here in the sixth. On a single sacrifice. And then Scudero drives in Torres. Arias is grounded out to the shortstop twice. In his third at bat. He flies out to the right field of Marquecas, getting back in just barely at first to Scudero. Well, your numbers, one and two hitters, sometimes your opposite fielder, in this case, the right fielder Marquecas, cheating a little bit in and makes what would have been a difficult play rather easy to throw to first too late. Outfield positioning much more important than infield positioning because you have to run farther to make the play Makes sense. Yeah Orioles in the shift belt first pitch drives it to deep right center And it bounces over the ground will double oh, What a tough break for the Giants Old saying in the game that when you're playing poorly you don't get the breaks and they didn't get a break here because Scudero must head back to third. Yeah, right. Scudero scores easily had this ball hit the wall. Probably a triple for Belt. But because it bounces over the fence, a ground rule double. And the Orioles say, I'll take it. Extra base hit in today's game on either side. And the second hit of the game for Brandon Belt. I think I would walk Posey here to pitch to Pence. Brandon Belt has been a hot hitter. A rarity for the Giants. You're looking at a 319 hitter against left handed pitching. To me, this is an easy call. I think you got to walk him and pitch to Pence. But Buck Showalter disagrees with that theory. Posey 0 for 2 today takes ball one. You know, a pitcher who does not speak English can, they can bring the interpreter out to the mound now, but the interpreter wasn't out there when Rick Adair, the pitching coach, spoke to, to Chin. I wonder why. Say, for instance, he's saying, don't give this guy a strike to hit or pitch around him. How would Chin know what he was saying? Well, now they will walk. Yeah, Posey following the first two pitches. 
Well, we, when we spoke to Chad yesterday, his interpreter, Tim, was there, but then towards the end of the conversation, yeah, you're right. we, we could sense that right. he understood most of what we were saying. He mm -hmm. answered one of the questions in English, so he does seem to have a pretty good grasp, but was more comfortable with the interpreter and, on and, hand. And also today, in the clubhouse, three hours before the game, he walked by us, kind of nodded, and I say, I said, hi, lefty. And he, he smiled and laughed and shook his head. So you've been using that term for about 40 sure. years. Oh, yeah. Especially with one Mr. Carlton. Oh, yeah. I'll say. So the base is loaded for Pence with two outs. Pence 0 for two. Struck out his last time up. Giants had only one base run of the first five innings. They've loaded the bases and have already scored a run here in the sixth. <laughs> Troy Patton heading down to the Orioles pen. By the way, the intentional walk to Posey. First time Chen has gone to a three ball count in this game. <laughs> Two and one on Pence. Tie game. Bottom of the sixth there in San Francisco. Each team with a run on four base hits. Two one and Pence sends it to the right field corner. It's a fair ball. One run scores. Two runs score. The third Posey and the Giants take a three to one lead as Pence drives in his 53rd and 54th runs of the season. Just because you make the right move, as Buck Showalter did in walking Posey, doesn't mean it's going to work. Two breaking balls. Actually, a fastball. So, with the count two balls and no strikes, Pence takes a strike. In the count two and one, on a ball out of the strike zone, about six inches fair down the right field line. Some clutch hitting by Hunter Pence and the Giants take the lead for the first time in this series. Now, Sandoval with runners on second and third. First pitch, easy play for Davis, but the Giants score three runs on four hits, a sacrifice, and an intentional walk. They celebrate the dugout, 3-1 San Francisco.
Talk Saturday Baseball is presented by Budweiser. We move to the seventh. Here at AT&T Park in San Francisco, there's Hunter Pence. Two-run double to the bottom of the sixth. Broke a 1-1 tie, and the Giants now lead the Orioles 3-1. Wei and Chen, brilliant over the first five innings. Well, not only one base hitting, retired 13 in a row through the fifth, but allows three runs in the sixth, and his day is done as Brian Roberts will pinch it for the Orioles starter. Roberts 0 for 3 in last night's game. Batting 234 this season. Facing Guillermo Moscoso, who came on in the sixth in relief of Chad Godin. First two Orioles. Jones and Marcakis with singles off Moscoso, but then he retired the next three. So Roberts leading off here in the top of the seventh with the Giants now on top three to one. Roberts, then McClough, then Machado for the Orioles. They're in the seventh, now two and one. Sandoval in on the grass at third. As Roberts shoots it. The left field, Blanco is under it, one away. Angel Pagan, normally the center fielder for the Giants, has been out for the last three months, for the most part, with hamstring problems. I think of the defense, the Giants through at the Detroit Tigers in last year's World Series. It was just fabulous. Brandon Crawford. Angel Pagan. Gregor Blanco is a center fielder playing left field. So when the Giants have their best defense out there, they can put two of the three outfielders are talented center fielders, Means meaning they have more range. Pop to the right side. Belt calling for it. And the Clough is retired. Time now for the Just for Men Auto Stop foolproof stat. Hunter Pence with the two run double to the sixth. The first Giants extra base hits him with the bases loaded since the 13th of July. Orioles loaded the bases in the second inning off Godin could not score. Orioles have stranded seven base runners in the game. Manny Machado at the plate. He's 0 for 3 with a pair of strikeouts. You, know, you, you talked about the Giants defense last year. Mentioned Blanco. Who could forget the catch he made to preserve Matt Cain's perfect game last oh, yeah. June? Yeah, that's right. Some players will be best remembered for defensive plays. Dwayne Wise and Mark Burley's yeah. perfect game for the Chicago yep. White Sox. Yep. One one to Machado. Belt backpedaling. He's got it. I bet if you talk to the Baltimore Orioles, they will say that Manny Machado has had the worst four consecutive at bats of his career this afternoon. Machado 0 for 4, seventh inning stretch time at San Fran.
Today's telecast is sponsored by MasterCard, proud supporter of Stand Up to Cancer. By AT&T, helping you do what you do even better. AT&T, we think possible. 3-1 lead for the Giants. Bottom of the seventh inning here in San Francisco. Giants scoring all three of their runs in the sixth. New pitcher for the Orioles. It's K-Rod, Francisco Rodriguez, who was acquired by Baltimore from Milwaukee on July 23rd, facing a pinch hitter, Roger Kieschnick. He is batting for the pitcher, Moscoso. Francisco Rodriguez, better known as K-Rod, holds the Major League saves record, 62 for the Angels back in 2008. And, of course, the fans in this city will not want to think back to his performance against the Giants in the 2002 World Series. Boy, isn't that the truth? Some bad memories for Giants fans. Giants eight outs away from winning the World Series. Game six, Russ Ortiz at the Big A in Anaheim. Giants had a five-run lead, I believe. The three-run home run by Scott Spezio in that game. But K-Rod, you're right. As a young right-handed reliever then, he was spectacular during that World Series. Dusty Baker managed the team. Bruce Bochy saw the games on television, of course. And then when he became the manager, he vowed not to lose the World Series. And he hasn't. He's won two of them. A one-two to the pinch hitter, Keystick, who struck out three times in last night's game. Keystick, a third-round pick. Of the Giants in 2008 out of Texas Tech. He is a third cousin of former major leaguer Brooks Kieschnick. One, two from Rodriguez, and Kieschnick is down on strikes. Throw to first by T Garden. C.B. Buckner, the home plate umpire, wearing a microphone. Let's take you back to the fifth inning. Right in between where there's no protection. Good spot, huh? Good right. sound effects. Yeah. Though. Right underneath? Yep, it got me right in between the... Uh, in the pads? The pads, yeah. Okay. But I'm all right. Can you bend down? Yep. yep. All right, brother? Yeah. Sure. Yep. All right. All right. Tim, you know the feeling. Oh, boy. Unfortunately, you're right. I, I really miss that, too. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Instead, you're up in the booth having a ridiculous amount of fun. That's correct. Looking at a crowd who has a ridiculous amount of fun here at this uh, gorgeous ballpark. Look at all the sailboats out there. The American Cup. How many balls have sailed into McCovey Cove as of late? Not many. Not off Giants bats at least. No. That's a long way. Not the only guy who could hit the ball into McCovey Cove with any consistency was McCovey <laughs> who never had a chance to play here. We talked about Willie Mays earlier. Well, Willie McCovey comes to almost all giant games. Sits right next to us. The booth a uh, couple of booths away. And what a gentle giant he was in every way until he swung the bat. Sure was. Well, Fox Fantasy Football provides the complete fantasy football experience fully 
Customizable leagues, draft guides, cheat sheets, player rankings, state-of-the-art features, mobile access, and it's all 100% free. Log on to foxsports.com slash fantasy and start your league today. There's Willie McCovey. We used to have meetings and Orlando Cepeda was traded to the Cardinals back in 1966 for Ray Sadecki. And he said, I never try to tell a pitcher how to pitch, but if I'm holding a runner on, don't throw Willie McCovey anything down. He knew. He knew. Another Hall of Famer with the Giants. Orlando Cepeda. I mean, when you think of the hitters that went through this organization in the 60s, the outfielders, there's a prelude of uh, Bobby Bonds coming. Mays, McCovey, Cepeda, Gaylord Perry, Philippe Lou. Base hit. Into the right field corner off the bat of Blanco. Marquecas having some trouble at right locating the ball. So it's a double for Blanco. Yeah, the guy who saved Marquecas an error on that play was Blanco because he couldn't look fast enough to right field. Gregor having a tough time offensively this year. Doubles right inside the line. Now, Marquecas tries to pick it up with a bare hand. And by that time, Blanco had his back to the play. Of course, understandably. By the time he picked it up, he couldn't go to third. Blanco had been six for his last 58, but he's come through in two plate appearances today. A sacrifice in the sixth and now a double in the seventh. Big at bats. Here's Scudero, who drove in the first San Francisco run of the sixth, which tied the game. Some big at bats for the bottom of the order. Torres, the number eight hitter for the Giants, led off the sixth with a single to center field. That started the Giants three run rally. Two outs bottom of the seventh inning. Blanco takes his lead off second. The 0 1 to Scudero. K Rod missing low and away. Now one and one. One one to Scudero, fouls it off to the right side. Now one and two. <laughs> Orioles scored their run in the third. Off Chad Godan, Baltimore starter Wei in Chen, brilliant over the first five innings. Will have three runs in the sixth. One two in the dirt blocked by T Garden now two balls two strikes. Two two from Rodriguez fastball missing low and away and the count is full. Rodriguez in relief of Chen. Playoff pitch, and it's fouled off to the right side.
41,315 on hand. As Tim mentioned, 225 consecutive sellouts here at AT&T Park. Scudero down on strikes. So Blanco stranded on second. Part of the order, Davis, Jones, Markakis do up for the Orioles who trail by two. Welcome back, Kenny Albert, Tim McCarver, AT&T Park, San Francisco. Giants lead the Orioles 3-1 as we move to the 8th. 33-year-old right-hander Santiago Casilla is the third Giants pitcher of the game, having an outstanding season. He's allowed only four earned runs in 28 and two-thirds innings, facing the heart of the Orioles' order as Chris Davis leads off. Casilla also on a run. He has thrown 15 consecutive scoreless innings over his past 16 appearances. Davis crushes this one. That'll end. No doubt about it. Number 42 on the season for Chris Davis pulling the Orioles to within one. Let me read that note again. Let's hear it again, Tim. He has tossed 15 consecutive scoreless innings over his last 16 appearances until the 1 0 pitch to Chris Davis. Who oh crushed my it. Gosh. 448 feet off the bat of Davis. <laughs> oh. People out in that area, we talked about it earlier. It's where triples go to die. That one still lives. <laughs> Man. That's ridiculous. He had won 453 feet the other day in San Diego on Wednesday afternoon. My gosh. Seven home run lead on Miguel Cabrera, who went deep today, took Mariano Rivera deep last night. Here's Adam Jones. Take it to the bag by Belt. 
What a win. You know, it's funny how the game has changed. I will guarantee you, 30 years ago, Brandon Belt would have been on the line at first base. But because he's in the hole, Davis, no doubt about it. Brandon Belt way off the line at first base, allowing him to catch the ball hit by Adam Jones instead of playing toward the line. With one out, here's Marcakis. Here's Adam Jones. Look where Belt is. Long run to the bag. He won the foot race. Yeah. Two hits from Arcakis today. It's a one run game. Following the 42nd home run of the season off the bat of Davis, he's now driven in 109 runs. Chris Davis, who back in 2004 was the 1,496th pick in the draft by the Yankees. That was third to last in the entire draft. Along the lines of uh, Buck Showalter, we talked about him earlier and in our visit today he said, you know, with this new steroid allegations, it's amazing how many of the guilty players have all been adamant. And he said that's the key word, adamant. And any time a guy hits more than 40 home runs in a year, you, you wonder, well, yeah. and you know how Chris Davis handles it. Buck was telling us that, you know, they ask him. You know, most new towns that uh, the, where the Orioles go on the road and things. And Chris simply says, no, I've never used steroids. I've never used this. I've never used that. He's very calm in his in his answer. But I thought that was very shrewd of Buck to say, you know, that that the more adamant they are, it seems like the more guilty they are. Right. And, and that is true, too. You know, it, Buck says a lot of things that you think about without saying it before he says it. Therein lies, I think, a lot of his uh, his brilliance. He verbally says what a lot of people think. He's done a tremendous job everywhere he's been. Everywhere. And we started to bring up the story earlier. You mentioned one of our colleagues at Fox, my football partner, Moose Johnston, who played for the Dallas Cowboys, won three Super Great Bowls. Great story. Buck Showalter managed the Texas Rangers in the Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington area through 2006. Well, mm -hmm. Darrell Moose Johnston and his family wound up renting a house from Buck Showalter after he lost the Texas Rangers job. Which only baseball people and football people can understand because you live a transient existence. Two and two on Marcakis. With one out top of the eighth inning. Full count. Great at bat by Marcakis thus far. JJ Hardy waiting on deck. That home run hit by Davis, 448 feet. Second longest in this ballpark this year. Sandoval back in May hit a 464 foot shot. And now Marcakis with a base hit. Into right field. Now I'll tell you, that is a professional hitter's at bat right there. Working the count to 3 2, fouling off tough pitches. He finally gets a pitch to hit. Down in the strike zone. 
He has been consistent since coming in the league back in 2004. Third hit for Marcakis today. He has three of the six Oriole base hits. Jose Mahares was up earlier, heading back down to the Giants' pen. I said 2004 for Nick. Uh, 2006 was his first year with the Orioles. Drafted in 03, seventh overall in the first round. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you talked about the Giants and all the success they've had, and, and it's led to them picking late in the first round. Well, the Orioles went through so many losing seasons, they accumulated high picks and used them on the many of the players that we've talked about today. Machado, third overall. Weeders, fifth overall pick. Marquez is seventh back in 2003. Yeah, I think the way the system works, it doesn't work for parity, but it certainly works. Ground ball to the left side. It's backhanded by Arias. The throw is not in time. Everybody's safe. Marquez and it's second. Hardy safe at first. Another good play by Arias at shortstop who wound up near the third base line after he let it go. You can see Sandoval guarding the line against the double. So Arias has to go ranging far to his right. And credit Marquecas for busting it into second base. Beating the throw. Ooh, that was close. At left foot almost suspended in air when Scudero made the play. One more time. Watch the left foot of Nick Marcakis. It was really close at second base. So an infield single for Hardy. Ryan Flaherty at the plate and Matt Wieters has come out into the on deck circle for the Orioles. Two on only one out. Davis led off the inning with a home run. Jones bounced out to belt first baseman and now back to back singles for Marcakis and Hardy. Orioles without a base hit with runners in scoring position today. Look at Davis in the dugout. And that home run, Tim, of the 42 he has hit this year, we witnessed the longest of his 42 home runs. Longer than the one on Wednesday afternoon? How about that? By one foot. <laughs> That's great. 12 inches. Like the left knee, CB Buckner getting one in the right knee earlier in that crease. And Buster Posey in his left knee. Maharis and Romo. Maharis the left hander. Romo the closer. Two two from Casier called strike three. Clarity thought that ball was high. It was close, a hanging breaking ball. He thought it went above the the certainly above the belt, but not above the letters. Reason players complain about a pitch like that. Is because the umpire rarely calls that a strike. Ryan thought it was high, but Casillas got the call. So now Matt Wieters pinch hitting for T Garden with two on, two out.
Orioles trail by a run. Waiters two hits in last night's game. He had been just three for his last 36 prior to last night. You notice how the infielders on the right side are deeper than they would normally be. The reason for that is with a runner on at second base, particularly a tying run, you want to be deep enough to where you can knock down a ground ball and keep that runner from scoring. That's the runner at second base. The idea defensively, you can't be everywhere, so you play the odds. The odds are if you're playing deep enough, you can knock a ground ball down and prevent the guy from scoring from second base. Marquette gets the runner on second, Hardy over at first. A one run from Cassia, missing away, now two and one on the pinch hitter, Matt Wieters. A rare day out of the starting lineup for Wieters. He leads American League catchers in innings caught this season. Only the 15th start for Taylor Teagarden. Wieters 0 for 5 as a pinch hitter this year. Takes strike two. Two from Cassia. Cassia has thrown 23 pitches in the inning, allowed a leadoff home run. Three hits in the inning for the Orioles. lead 3-2. Two. two outs, top of the eighth inning. Two to the winners, he struck him out. Orioles strand two. Middle of the eighth. One run game in San Francisco.
We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And by Fox Sports 1, America's new sports network, coming in just seven days on August 17th. Back in San Francisco, bottom of the eighth inning, with the Giants leading 3-2. Third Orioles pitcher. He is the 30-year-old right-hander out of the University of Florida, Darren O'Day. Starter Wei and Chen went six innings, allowed three runs on five hits. Francisco Rodriguez pitched a scoreless seventh. And now it's O'Day to face Arias, Belt, and Posey. Weeders remains in the game behind the plate for Baltimore. Arias 0 for 3. I think as uh, broadcasters and here on Fox, we try to think of things that that fans would perhaps want to see at a ballpark that they've never seen before, never really thought about it, or have seen it, and and yet I uh, never really thought about it. Here's something we've we've canned as strikeout alley. It's when a hitter strikes out and is on his way back to the dugout. Where does he look? If it's a first base dugout, he looks to right center field. <laughs> Adam Jones going back to the first base dugout. Where does he look? Right center field. Ryan Flaherty. Where does he look? Right center field. You know, unofficially, in my experience, I think it's because the reason that guys who strike out and go to the third base dugout look in the left center and right center at first base, I think it's that that psychologically they don't want to face their teammates after failing at the plate. Now, you know, I'm not, I guess I'm trying to be an amateur shrink here, but it's a fun thing to look for when you're at a ballpark. You just watch the guys who struck out. And if they go to the third base dugout, they look to left center. 90% of them. And to the first base dugout, they look to right center. Just a thought. Where's Brandon Belt looking? Left center. Where? Well, yeah. Left center. It, you know, you're going back. Now think about it. I mean, you're going back to the dugout. You don't want to look at your teammates. So in that area between home and the dugout, that's when you shoot a glance toward left center. So you shot a glance 422 times during your playing career. I was part of those glances. Oh, yeah. I didn't understand it at the time because I never thought about it. But it's something we've kind of uh, we've called strikeout alley. So look for strikeout alley the next time you're at a ballpark. Yeah, keep an eye on it. Yeah. <laughs> It's fun. And Darren O'Day has struck out first two batters he has faced. Arias and Belt here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And now Posey falls behind nothing in two. That's eight straight strikes from O'Day. Eight straight strikes from Darren O'Day. That streak comes to an end. Now the one two to Posey. O'Day missing high. Make Sunday extra special by going out to the ballpark. Go to MLB.com slash Sunday to find special ticket offers. Now the 2-2, a call strike three. So three up for the Giants in the eighth. You talk about strikeout alley. Arias, Belt, and Posey all strike out.
We head to the ninth. One run game. America's new sports network is coming in just seven days, and it all begins with an epic night of premieres, beginning with UFC Fight Night as Shogun Hua takes on Chael Sonnen, followed by the news and highlight show fans have been waiting for Fox Sports Live. It all begins next Saturday at 8 Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1. Top of the ninth inning here in San Francisco. There's Sergio Romo. 27 saves, fifth of the National League. On to pitch the ninth with the Giants leading 3 2. Arias moves from short to third, and Brandon Crawford enters the game at shortstop. Henry Arutzi, a pinch hitting for the Orioles, the 26 year old switch hitter from Cuba, his dad a member of the Cuban Olympic team back in. 1992. Arutio for five as a pinch hitter this season. He'll be followed by McClough and Machado. Arutio with a base hit into left field. So the leadoff bat is on for the Orioles here in the top of the ninth. Time now for the King Plays of the Game, brought to you by Burger King, where taste is king. Tough day at the plate, Tim, for Manny Machado. Well, I'll tell you, uh, you know, he is going to have another shot to make up for those uh, those four bats previous. And I will guarantee you that the Baltimore Orioles have not seen that out of Manny Machado, four straight at bats in any one ball game. Machado on deck. McLeod at the plate as Romo throws over to first. One swing you can make up with an 0 for 4. Arias hit on the grass at third. I don't think you bunt here. Fastball in for strike one. Generally speaking, the rule of thumb is you don't bunt to tie on the road. Orioles tremendous in one-run games last year. How about that? 
This year, three under the 500 mark. And you made a good point earlier, Tim, as we were preparing for the broadcast. You said because the Orioles have so much power this year, 154 home runs, their, their record, their overall record is within two games of where they were at this time last year. They're winning more games by more than one run. Yeah, yeah. They're winning, but they're winning in different ways. A little better starting pitching last year. Not nearly as good a hitting, obviously, as they have had this year, largely thanks to Chris Davis, who has driven in 21% of the Orioles' runs this year. Orioles, as a team, have scored 44 of their runs via the home run. 50% mm -hmm. in today's game. Yeah. Yeah, well, if if there are no double plays in this inning, Chris Davis will be the hitter in a damaging situation facing a right-handed pitcher. Now two and two on McClough. Orioles led one nothing. Giants scored three in the sixth, and then a Davis solo home run of the eighth. McLeod shoots it into shallow right center. Coming on to make the catch is Torres for out number one. Well, Fox Sports supports is proud to partner with Johns Hopkins Medicine. Johns Hopkins is at the forefront of groundbreaking. Research into autoimmune disorders like multiple sclerosis and lupus. Join us in the fight against autoimmune disease. Donate now by visiting hopkinsmedicine.org slash fox. Manny Machado. 0 for 4. Big opportunity here in the ninth inning. With one out and a runner on first. Knowing Sergio Romo, he'll throw 10 sliders in a row to a hitter. On the ground to the left side. And Machado is safe at first. So with two outs, one run game, guess who's coming to the plate? Who else? Davis has never faced Romo. In the eighth inning, he took Cassia deep for his major league leading 42nd home run of the season. And now an opportunity with two outs at the top of the ninth. Great job by our entire crew here in San Francisco, led by producer Jeff Gowan, director Jim Lynch, associate director Eric Mandiant, associate producer Andy Cavanaugh, executive producer of the pregame show Mike Cotter, producer Ethan Kleinberg, director Mike Martin, Ben Bowman crunching the numbers for us along with Mark Seguro. No, Kenny, when you think about it, most closers overwhelm you with their stuff but not Sergio Romo he overwhelms you with his courage his guts this guy's got as much guts as any closer in baseball on the ground to the right side and that will do it save number 28 for Romo
After an extra inning loss last night, Giants come back, win it 3 2 for Tim McCarver. Kenny Albert saying so long from San Francisco. We now send it to Matt Faskersian and Daryl Hamilton at the MLB Network Studios for more post game coverage.